Hey guys, today this video is going to be all about my installation of this exposed fastener metal roof on my garage. I used a Pro Rib panel from Menards. This is my first experience doing any kind of roofing, so I was kind of learning as I go. So I'm going to go through how I installed it myself, some mistakes that I made that if you are doing this on your own, uh, you might want to avoid. And then at the end, I'll tell you what I like and didn't like about it. Now, of course, I'm not a professional roofer. Uh, by any means, so please, if you're thinking about doing this by yourself, talk to a professional first. Uh, I'm going to start by showing you guys how I measured and ordered the uh, panels and everything I needed for the project. So here's a diagram of what the measurements of the garage look like. It's 227 and a quarter inches from the roof edge up to the peak. And then I'm gonna add an inch for the overhang down here at the roof edge. So I ordered 228 uh, and a quarter inch metal sheets. Now my garage is 30 feet long. So there are, the metal sheets are gonna come three foot wide. So it's gonna take 10 of those to do the whole length. And then I added two on for extra, so I ended up getting 10 plus 10, 20 plus 2, so 22 of the metal sheets. Then the other things I needed to order, the roof edge, those come in 10 foot sections, so I ordered six of those plus an extra one. The rake trim, those come in 12 foot sections, and I ended up ordering seven of those. And then the last thing that I needed to order, well, two more things actually, was the ridge cap. Those come in 10 foot sections. I needed 30, 30 feet, so I ordered three of those. Because I'm not I'm gonna have a little bit of extra gap here because I'm not gonna be putting the ridge cap over the cupola. And then around the cupola, I'm gonna have to do um, end wall flashings and sidewall flashings. Now those come in 10 foot sections, so that's gonna be more than enough for everything I need to do around there. So I just ordered one of each of those. Um, and then on top of that, some other things that I need that I needed to order. Um, I already have a square, a seaming or a bending tool for the metal and metal snips. I ordered those. I had to order outside and inside closures. Now those are going to go where the metal is meeting trim pieces, and I'll explain those as I go. I'll show you guys what those look like too. And then I also ordered some touch-up paint just in case I, I. Uh, end up scratching the metal and the screws. I ended up ordering two five pound bags, so I got 10 pounds of those screws, so hopefully that'll be plenty. And then I also, since I'm gonna go over top of the asphalt shingles, I needed some purlin strips. So I'm gonna put every two feet, there's gonna be a one by four purlin strip that's gonna go the whole way across along with all the trim is going to be have purlin strips on it. Um, so I calculated all that out. I needed 98 of those. And I already picked those up. Um, so that should be everything. If I forgot something, I'll let you know along the way. It's here. So I got the supplies in earlier this week. It's been raining for the last couple days, so I haven't started. Um, on it yet but the next two days is not supposed to rain it did rain last night so my plan to start is get the wood purlin strips up on the roof and then hopefully by this afternoon the roof will be dried out enough where i can start putting the metal on i already took down the gutter because the drip edge is going to have to come right over the uh, fascia on the edge there so i had to remove the gutter and now we're going to get started with the uh, wood pur purlin strips so these are the one by four purlins that I'm gonna use. I got eight footers, so some of them I'm gonna have to cut depending on how close I am um, to certain things. Now, I'm gonna start at the front of the roof on this garage, which is a, maybe a couple feet and then it runs into this cupola. So I put, the, I put a ridge cap up here that I had from a chicken coop that I did with this metal on the roof of that. Uh, just to give myself an idea of how far the ridge cap is going to come. And then I'm going to kind of mark that spot because my screws are going to be going in through here and I want those to hit the purlin strip. So I need the purlin strip to be up at least that far. I'm probably going to put it up a little bit farther. <clears throat> 
So I got my first purlin strip up here, which I cut to length and unneeded. <clears throat> now I know that there's a foot overhang between the edge of the roof and the first truss in the garage. So I'm gonna put some nails on the end and then go in a foot. And then from there, these trusses are 16 inches on center. So I cut this piece of wood 16 inches. That way I can put it up there where my nail marks are and know exactly where the next truss is. So nailed down the purlin strips. I'm using a framing nailer that I borrowed from Claire's dad. <laughs> um, it's got two and a half inch nails in it. Cut these two by fours here um, so that I can use them to just set my boards up and I know that they'll be the same width apart. I'm gonna put nails in these furring strips that are 24 inches on center as I come down. So that's how I cut those two by fours. And then you guys will see how I use them just to prop the board right up against it and it'll make this go a lot quicker. So I partially finished this side of the roof with the uh, purlin strips. I borrowed this scaffolding from my father-in-law, which is really convenient um, for working on the roof edge here. So before I move it down, I'm going to put the roof edge on this first 10-foot section right here, and I'll show you guys how I'm going to do that. So here I cut an inch and a half off the top of the drip edge, got rid of that piece, and then I used my mending tool to bend the front of the drip edge down so that it will overlap the rake trim. And I did this on all the trims so they overlap each other. Then after this, I used one and a half inch riffing nails to tack the drip edge on. So now that I got the riff edge on and all the purlin strips halfway down the side, I'm going to go ahead and start laying some panels first along the um, roof edge here. I'm going to put the inside closures because the panels are going to go on top of those. So they have a sticky side that attaches to the roof edge. I'm going to put that one inch down from the end of the top edge all the way across. Peel the sticky side off, put it on there. You guys will see. And then we'll be ready to put the panels on. So here I'm using the inside foam closure strips. Once we got the panel squared to the eave, I went ahead and put the top row of screws in. I put one screw on either side of each rib. The screws I tightened so that the washer wouldn't move and it was tight, but not too tight to where the neoprene started coming out the sides of the washer. That first panel I put screws on one side of the rib as I moved down on each purlin strip. Then this next panel I trimmed around my cupola. Okay guys, so I've got enough of the metal around the cupola that I can flash that one, at least this side of it now. So I'm going to do that next. So I've got this top piece here is the sidewall flashing. The piece underneath that is the end wall flashing. The end wall flashing is a little bit bigger. <clears throat> I'm going to be using outside closures now for where the flashing meets the metal panel. I'm going to use butyl tape to seal the flashing to the side of the cupola. And that should be everything that I need, plus uh, screws. So I didn't get very good video of the flashing install on the cupola, but this is what it looked like when I was all done with one side. I put the end wall flashing on first, and then the side wall flashings on second. 
Now that end wall flashing has a foam closure underneath of it. The two sidewall flashings I cut in a way so that I could bend them over the end wall flashing so they overlap at the corners. And then I put butyl tape underneath all of that. Now the sidewall flashings, I left a little bit extra metal at the end so that when I put this, the sidewall flashing of the other side on, it'll overlap where the ridge cap is gonna come in. And then that area will be all enclosed. Okay guys, so final thing I'm gonna try today is put one piece of this um, rake edge on this corner right here. Um, I'm gonna try using uh, you know, cutting an inch off and bending it to overlap that piece right there like I did on the uh, drip edge. So, that's what I got done today. What time did we get up, Clay? What time we start working on this? 10.30. 10.30, it's 8.30, so, you know, 10 hours, three panels. Taking a little longer to expect, no, but honestly, it was the cupola that probably took four hours, three or four hours. Yeah. And we were down for a little bit since we didn't have the right um, drill bit for the screws, so. So we'll get back at it early tomorrow morning. So I finished this trim piece that we started yesterday. Um, so now I gotta cut a piece so it can make it from that last little bit up to the uh, ridge. And then I'll be ready to start putting panels on the other side. was able to cut this piece of rake trim so that it goes on both sides of the rake edge and then fasten that every 24 inches with a screw. Okay, so I just finished all the trim on the front of the garage. Um, one thing I noticed after I had put the trim on was that where the two pieces connect, there was a, the front side of the rake was kind of popped out on the one that's on top. So it was, you can tell there was a gap there. That one you can still see, there's a little bit more of a gap there. So what I did, which helped a little bit, was just take some beetle tape and put it right in between the uh, two pieces where they overlap on the outside and then kind of smooshed them together and hopefully that'll help it hold a little bit better. So next thing, I'm just gonna put on one more panel and then I'll be ready to do the flashings on this side and then I can put on um, one piece of the ridge cap. Okay guys, so I finished the flashing and then I already put on my closure, foam closure strip. So I'm ready to put the ridge cap on, which I'll do next. The foam closures, you just gotta pay attention to the inside versus the outside. This one that we're gonna put with the ridge cap is gonna be the outside closure. So it's flat on top. So first I trimmed off either side of my ridge cap so it'll slide and be flush with the rake trim once I put it on. I put a screw on every rib along the ridge cap. So I finished putting the screws in the ridge cap, in this first part of the ridge cap here, that's good to go. I ended up putting two screws on the end uh, where the ridge cap meets the rake trim because that just seemed loose, like wind could get under there and pull it up. So I know that one on the left, I scraped the paint off, so I'll just see if I can put the touch-up paint on there. Yesterday I ended up working on the cupola all day. Didn't turn out as exactly as I planned, so I highly recommend if you have something like that, to buy a specific flashing kit for it. I just used leftover metal and kind of mended it with my mending tool as best I could because I didn't plan ahead for that as well as I should have. But today we're gonna, I finished off the rest of the purlin strips. So we're gonna keep going and putting our metal on. So the important part about getting the first piece right on square with the eave 
is if you don't, then you're gonna start stepping off the edge of the roof. Like as you can see here, our first piece wasn't exactly square, so we're running into some problems. That's how much I have between the eave and my hangover there. And up here, my whole finger fits under there, so there's about an eighth of an inch in between each panel that's becoming closer and closer to the eave. So we're gonna have to try and correct that as we go. But obviously that would be much easier if we just had gotten the first piece square, which is not always easy, but. So we found for the foam closures, it was a lot easier to put them on after the panel was on because when we were putting them on before, the ribs weren't lining up and then it was awkward to try and move them in the right place, so. Claire is doing that for us. Good job, Claire. Sometimes the hired help gets a little bit off task and distracted. Lara, get back to work. My plan is as I get three or four of the panels up, I'm just gonna put the ridge caps on as I go. That way I have a little bit of um, shingle and purlin to walk on as I get up there. So it's gonna get harder and harder as I put more of the more of the panels on. So tedious um, but using the the uh, drill to pre-drill the holes before I put the screws in the ridge cap helped out a lot so, um, we're about halfway done with the panels so we get the panels and the other ridge caps on will be pretty much done I'll give you guys a quick recap so I finished the roof about two days ago it's been raining non-stop since and good news is that it's not leaking but um, I'm going to take you guys around show you a couple mistakes that I made uh, on this roof and the things that I should have done differently and then give you a couple final thoughts on the project. So when you're putting the panels on, there's going to be an underlap side and an overlap side. Now the overlap side, the overlap side is going to be shorter. The underlap side is going to go further into the next panel. And that's going to create a little bit of a gap here um, in between the panels where it's, where it's lapping. Now, I incorrectly assumed that the overlap side was going to be the fatter lip. So the first two panels that I put on uh, were wrong, but this is the way that you should do it, is that the shorter, the skinnier rib is going to be the overlap, the fatter rib is going to be the underlap. So here's another thing that I mentioned, since the first panels weren't exactly square to the eave, as we came down the roof, we started getting closer and closer to the eave, and in order to keep enough of the panel um, hanging over the edge, we had to start staggering the panels a little bit. So you can see there's maybe a quarter of an inch difference between those two panels. This, this one's probably the most um, stark difference between all the panels that we put on so I used it as an example but um, so you really want to get those first panels square otherwise you're gonna have to adjust um, somehow uh, later on as you as you move down the roof to keep it from stepping off the roof or stepping up onto the roof too much another thing that I mentioned earlier in the video with the rake trim is where the two rake trim pieces meet it tended to be offset like that in the in the front and the back of the garage so i did put some butyl tape in there but obviously that hasn't worked since um it's already coming apart there so I'll, I'll have to get a smaller screw or something to keep those attached uh, so the wind doesn't catch that and, and make it separate even more also i should have ordered more screws i ended up um, not having quite enough screws at the end so for now I have the panels up there um, I just I just skipped a rib these last couple panels here I just skipped a rib to conserve on the screws and I didn't put a screw in every rib up the ridge cap I did I skipped a couple ribs and put screws in there so 
Um, I ordered some more screws and later I can just go up there and, and put some more in it. But uh, for this size project, I probably should have ordered at least 15 pounds of the screws. Also, like I said, the cupola, um, I didn't have pieces to fit that exactly. So I had to mend my own out of panels, uh, which turned out to be challenging being that I had never worked with the metal before and I really didn't have a lot of experience doing that. Um, it was difficult for a beginner like me, but um, I have seen online where you can buy, you know, just roofs to put on a cupola. If you, you can get custom ordered ones that would definitely um, look a little bit better. Um, so if that's something that you have that you might, that you're gonna do, you know, you could look into a kit like that or custom ordering just a separate roof for the cupola. That's metal. So overall, the install wasn't too bad. The The whole process of it was pretty straightforward and simple. Um, just following the manufacturer's instructions. Um, and then I also used some tips from other YouTube videos and such that I found. It did take me significantly longer than I thought it was going to. Um, it was four full days. Uh, working on this, but honestly a day and a half was spent just trying to do that cupola um, So wherever there's gonna be protrusions through the roof That's obviously gonna take you longer and you're gonna want to spend more time on that because that's where the most uh, Highest chance of having a leak is gonna be so um, and I still got to put the gutters back on as you guys can see I haven't done that yet <clears throat> Now whether or not I would do this again, that's totally gonna depend on the longevity of this roof um, and obviously with the exposed fastener, I'm gonna have to go up there and check it every once in a while to make sure that the, the fasteners are holding up and um, that the, the neoprene sleeves are working and that they're not drying out. <clears throat> um, so, you know, the longevity, that's a big question as to whether or not this whole roof's gonna be worth it. Um, cost, the final cost for all the materials ended up being $2,200. Um, which was very reasonable compared to an asphalt uh, roof. It really wasn't that much more expensive. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those below, and I hope that you uh, got something out of the video.